Hello everybody, my name is Neostrike, and welcome back to Daring Do and the Marked Thief of Maripor. Chapter 5, Room Number 3 It was no wonder the innkeeper was perturbed. The room was an absolute mess. The bed sheets had been torn off the mattress and thrown across the floor. The plush pillows had been ripped apart, and the white feathers had exploded everywhere, causing the entire place to look like it had gotten almost an inch of downy snow. The flickering bedside lamp was overturned, and there was a trail of muddy hoofprints tracked all over the wooden panels of the barn floor. The work of the ruffian. One of Caballeron's men? It was his hedge ponies who had trashed her cottage while searching for the last ring of Scorchero. Looks like some pony wasn't raised in a barn. Daring Do said aloud, peeking under the tousled blankets. The innkeeper sniffed, and left Daring Do alone to dig around. After Daring Do had searched the whole room high and low, she was incredibly disappointed. All she'd found was an old, half-used jar of goops for stuff hide ointment, and a crumpled piece of parchment with some circles scribbled on it. They meant nothing to her, but she stashed them in her bag anyway. It seemed that the cloak pony had simply forgotten them on the table in the madness of it all. It was too bad he'd left no other clues in his wake. The next morning, Daring Do awoke before dawn to find that her body was stiffer than a board on a pirate ship's plank. It was as if each wing and limb had been bound with rope and then tied to a sandbag. Though it was the first time in weeks she had had a full night of sleep, it wasn't restful. She tossed and turned throughout the night, her mind hijacked by a disturbing dream that she had been surrounded by hundreds of little animals crying out for her. She tried to shake the odd feeling it gave her, but she could still imagine their fuzzy faces and watering eyes. Save us, Daring Do, they pleaded. The plea mixed with that of the strangers and swirled above her head like a gray rain cloud. A sliver of morning light began to peek through the burlap curtains. Daring was about to go draw a hot bath to loosen up before she took off again, when a jar on the nightstand caught her attention. It was the hide ointment that had been left behind in room three. No time for a bath, she thought. This would do perfectly to ease my aching muscles until I can relax. She scooped out a generous portion of the oily green goop and slathered it on her green and gold compass rose cutie mark. It smelled a bit sour. Daring looked at the jar again. Nothing on the bottle indicated it had gone bad. She shrugged. She rubbed the stuff in and made sure that it soaked into her flank and hind legs. A moment later, a tingling sensation took over, and she was able to stretch and walk once more. Daring Do is back in action, and ready to save some ponies by finding those Flankara relics. That is, if a certain raider hadn't gotten there first. And that's it for Chapter 5. I'm Neostrike. And I'll see you all in the next chapter. Bye-bye.